But let me let me talk to you about uh, uh, the issue I've had with the cops. Uh, you know, my concerns and, and and discontent is, you know, COVID. After uh, the George Floyd riots, you know, I was very much like, if there's one thing I think any any person can agree on that police should be doing is stopping rioting, stopping direct crime against individuals, violent crime and things like that. You want to argue about drugs being legal, all the libertarian stuff. It's like, okay, okay, we'll have the debate about that. But we all, we all agree, like, if people are running around burning down buildings, we would appreciate a police force to be like, yeah. hey, stop doing that. The problem is, and there's reasons behind this, but for one, we saw in New York, cops were standing down. We saw in many of these circumstances, cops standing down. We know why, as you were mentioning, it's too dangerous and they have no support from the community. So I'm not going to, you know, go and, and cheer on the people who live in New York City for voting for and supporting the problems they're causing themselves. But when I saw the police, even local sheriffs, going to cafe owners and salon owners and arresting them or fining them or shutting down their businesses over COVID, I was like, nah, you lost me. You know, it, I can come out all day and say that uh, the regular working class cop, you know, is, is not a racist, that, that those are media lies and narratives. These stories are, are few and far between. They're rare circumstances. But man, the stuff we saw around police shutting down people's livelihood, uh, lively, it, it, this was everywhere. You had Attila's gym. Cops showed up, shut him down, even arrested. I think one guy got arrested. The government issued all these fines and the police are the ones backing it up. In North Jersey, you had a woman whose store was closed and she was live streaming her products. Cops showed up and shut her down. You had a sheriff's department in Minnesota chase a woman or, or uh, uh, it, was, it was an Iowa department, I believe, apprehend a woman because she had opened her coffee house during lockdown. And with a smile on their face, they, 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 they grabbed these people. With, and that, that blows my mind. How, how, how is that? And, and, you know, explain to me that mindset that you could be a cop and be like, how dare this lady do someone's hair? I'm going to arrest her. That to me is insane. It is insane. I think, man, it's, it's tough because I don't, I don't want to bash the cops, but you can look on my Twitter feed from months ago when this was happening, and I said the same thing. I said, guys, you're being played. They are using you as their henchmen and you're being played, you've got to do the right thing. Everybody stand down. Mm -hmm. And But I also think there's got to be some responsibility on the other side, too. For the people that want to make a point, like when you go into a restaurant that's private and they go, hey, I've got to, I've got to abide by this or the police will come in and find me if I don't. And they're like, screw that. I want my food. But I can't because you're not, you're not abiding by this. Even though it's an unlawful mandate, I agree with that. Well, neither should have fear of serving or getting food. But because of our government, they're enforcing these mandates that are unconstitutional. And then both of them are, this, this owner is in fear of losing his livelihood. This guy's trying to prove a point that I don't have to follow these illegal mandates. And then the cop comes in, you know, and he probably agrees with both of them, honestly, and is like, man, these are stupid, but what am I supposed to do here? If I don't do this, my body cams on. Now I'm going to lose my job and my livelihood. And he should. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, if you're going to take a stand, if you're going to sacrifice, you've got to do it. I and, mean, but they can't, if they all stood up and said, no, they couldn't fire them all. Right. I don't, I'm, I'm not saying the cop should be fired. Uh, uh, technically, I'm saying the cop should uh, uh, gladly recognize the system is broken. You've become the villain. If, you know, and people say to me, you don't understand you, you, you need your job. You got to pay your bills. And I, my, my response is like, I totally get it. You know, people don't seem to understand because they're like, oh, look how successful you are, Tim. Uh, it's easy for you to say. And I'm like, it, it, I've always said it. Even when I was broke, it's what leads me to the, the point of success. And I'm unwilling to to compromise with the with with this kind of, you know, amoral behavior or, or illegality. At the very least, I could recognize the cop starting, you know, these officers and many have planning their exodus from these departments for other areas. Look at what Florida said. Florida, we, we had billboards out, uh, not out here. Where were they? Uh, I think there was one out here, actually. Billboards in like the D.C. area saying, become a police officer in Florida, now hiring benefits. Yeah, Florida, where we have your back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and they said, we got no mandates. You don't got to do this stuff. Don't have to do it. I think people need to realize you're not trapped in this one job. But what I wish, my point being, I agree with the no mandates. I was a push the limit on not wearing a mask. I'm not vaxxed. I'm not anti-vaccine. <laughs> I'm not anti-vaccine. Well, kids, they'll lie and say you are, you know? Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, anything that you disagree with, you get hammered. But 
so I'm not vaxxed. I hardly ever wore a mask unless I'm flying just because I got to get somewhere. And maybe that's hypocritical of me too. But <clears throat> the point is, go make your statement. Go in there. Have the police called on you. But when they come there, instead of giving the cop a hard time to go, you've made your point. Right. If you want to pick it outside, do it. But, I agree with that, but, actually. But they really don't want that hamburger. They want to make a point. And I get it. But do it where you're not harming the other people that kind of agree with you. You know, we, we, have, a, we have a lesson in, in skateboarding when we were little. It's uh, when, younger. If, when, when you're skateboarding in the streets, meaning you're going to corporate buildings or you're at loading docks behind you know, warehouses, you can skate. And as soon as you see a security guard, you leave. Yeah. When the security guard walks up and says, hey, you can't skate here, you go, sorry about that. And you leave. And then when he leaves, you come back. You come right back. Yeah. Who well, didn't? I, I, I would I would not advocate for immediately coming back. If you're told you're trespassing, you're trespassing. You shouldn't trespass. But the point is that if you leave right away, you don't blow up the spot, as we would call it. Meaning, other people have heard about it. They might end up showing up. We've had kids. You know, I remember this man. They smashed a window because the security guard told them to leave, and I'm like, they just ruin everything for everybody. So now you'll never be able to come back here because they'll set up something where you can't. So you know, I think about this, and I'm like, imagine going into a restaurant and they say, you can't be in here, there's a mandate. And they say, I'm not leaving because you're discriminating against me. And they say, well, I'm going to call the police. They say, okay, call the police. In every circumstance, the cops have showed up and said, you've been informed that you're trespassing, you're being warned to leave. At that point, you can be like, okay, walk out the front door, wait for the cops to go, walk back in and say, I want a cheeseburger. And that causes a bigger problem than having some cop arrest you and then inconvenience, inconveniencing yourself. And if you look at the bigger picture, here's what this has done now. This has taken... We've already had a divided country, right? In 2020, we were pretty, you had this group and this group that believed two different things, cops bad, cops good. Now what they've done is they've subdivided the good cop part because they're using them to enforce laws on people that supported the cops, but now the cops have to stand up to those people, and now they're mad at the cops. So now the left wins again because they've broken <laughs> us even more, and yeah, we're weaker. In, in New York, they had 27 police officers defending what was an illegal painting in the street. Bill de Blasio seized taxpayer funds illegally to paint Black Lives Matter in front of Trump's building. And 27 cops with smiles on their faces guarded that illegal act. I wouldn't admit them to do it. Now, now look, I, I, I understand these are, these are cops who live in New York City, so they're probably Democrats. And then you, but, but surprising to me, it's like, how could you live in a city where the people who vote for the politicians who appoint the, 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 the commissioner or the, the chief of police and then hire these, these other cops, you're the villain in this whole story to everyone. Right. The cops defending the Black Lives Matter mural are villains to the left already. And for defending the illegal actions of the mayor, they're villains to the right. Yep. I, I, you got to be, I, I, it takes a special kind of resolve to decide that you want to be hated by everybody. <laughs> and, but, but truth be told, it's not always the wrong choice. Sometimes being hated by everybody is the right thing to do. In this instance, I don't think so. The challenge, I guess, is, you know, people, people, it's, it's hard to just quit your job when you got a mortgage, when you got kids. And that's the, 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 that's the noose, man. Well, they get you. It's, it's no different than what, we're, what I was talking about a few minutes ago with all the government subsidies. They get you trapped and you can't do anything, you know, unless you take a leap of faith or you get a good opportunity. I mean, they get you trapped there too. This is, this is, it's, it's sad and it's scary because it's just like it's slavery. <laughs> Democrats are pushing uh, policies that put more people in positions where they can't leave their jobs and are and are desperate, and that's what it is. That's the boot on your neck. Yeah. So when you got what was it? Joe Biden was talking about this policy for urbanizing the suburbs. Huh. I don't know if you saw this one. The idea was to build more trains going into the suburbs to to do ban single single housing development things like that. Oh yes. That would create more desperation and destitution, which they then can manipulate by saying, you can't quit your job. You could only afford to live in this extremely high cost of living area on, on, with loans. Right. And then if you lose your job, you can't pay off your loans. And then we're going to come for your kids. And people say, okay, okay, you got me. I'll enforce whatever you say. And there it is. If everyone just said no, these problems would be solved instantly. What if I just took my mortgage out as a student loan? Would the government forgive it? Well, th well they're not doing that. That's what's funny. All the all the progressives were like, "Yeah, Biden for, forgives student loans," and he was like, "Nah." Yeah, I, I need to take happening. those billions and send them into the Middle East. Well, to be fair, you can you can file bankruptcy uh, and get a lot of your debt, you know, wiped, but uh, not for student loans. Yeah. So if you get student loans, I'm not a fan of the student loan system. I think I worked three jobs in college, so I don't feel sorry for them. But I do, th I do think personally, we can we can do something about the interest rates. Oh yeah, yeah, I would agree on the interest. I think or, that's why everybody agrees. Or 
how, how come colleges can increase their percentage of tuition every year so much? Mm. Yeah. I mean, it just keeps climbing. Because they want you it's to be an indentured them. servant. Because when you got student loans, you can't quit your job. Yeah. You can't file bankruptcy on student loans. They got you locked up and you don't even realize they got you locked up. But a lot of young people are starting to realize it. Now, here's what else happens. They use that to once again manipulate those they've already locked into indentured servitude with ridiculous, we'll forgive your student loans, vote for us. And then what happens? Biden's like, nope. Just kidding. Just Bait kidding. switch. Yeah. It would be nice if Donald Trump said, we're going to deal. He did suspend uh, loans, I believe, on, mm -hmm. during COVID. I think I think Donald Trump, if he gets elected, I think there should be some kind of executive action because these are these are federal loans. I think they, they have the authority to do this. I'm not sure. Just say interest rates shut down. Right. Again, pay back what you what you borrowed. Yeah, it's kind of like the thing earlier with the you know getting people back on their feet. Right. They don't have to get interest on them. Just get your money back. You borrowed it. You used the money. You got to pay it back. Because a lot of those but, loans weren't just for school. They got that that cost of living stuff too, exactly. where they, they could buy food, pay for their apartments, whatever else. I, you got to pay it all back. Yeah. If they gave you fifty grand, I think you got to pay it back, and we should discuss how that inflation works into that. However, you know, I know people who uh, have taken out like twenty thousand in loans, and now they own forty, and they've already paid back forty. And it's just like, insane. Yeah. yeah, these stories are insane. Right. So I, I think you got a lot of the. I, I think the populist right understands all of this. I think conservative Inc. often doesn't. You know, the more like establishment, not so much establishment, but a lot of these uh, conservatives say like, yeah, you're, those are your responsibility. You, you took out the loans, you signed the contract. And I'm like, that's true. I agree with that. I don't agree with making someone pay back 40 grand on a $17,000 yeah, loan. That's insane. Yeah, now we're getting to the point where the point of school loans and the reason you can't be declaring bankruptcy, in my opinion, or what I thought, was that we're gonna help kickstart your life to get you a good skill set, good career crippling them so they can't have families and buy houses yeah, is just the, bad for everybody. the government turn into the mafia. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. They'll never get me paid off. Yeah, well, and of course, these uh, these loans are subsidized by the government. The entire idea is they're going to guarantee the student loans, and that's only resulted in colleges raising tuition costs. And now you have instances where someone will borrow 20000 they'll end up paying back 40000 and you just have to ask the question, is it really a productive use of economic resources to have entire groups of people whose career is to live off of the interest of loans that were lent out prior that have already been more than paid back. Is that I, really I, the best use of uh, human willpower and thought and labor for someone to just be in a position where they're living off of interest? Think about I it. I don't think so. We, we, we're wondering why it is that a police officer is gonna arrest someone who owns a salon, mm -hmm. and that's why. And if you are an authoritarian in government, mm -hmm. the last thing you want is for police officers especially to say men of good conscience do not follow unjust orders mm -hmm. but when they say we'll take your kids we'll take your house yeah. and you'll be on the street then you'll see how, how quickly people are willing to bend over backwards yeah it will and also i mean it, it makes sense again given the way inflation works to charge some level of interest on a loan but you know once it's once you're paying back significantly significantly more than you took out i think it's it's pretty criminal and also uh, you know, when you look at real estate, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are in debt because they're paying off a mortgage, but they're building equity. You look at these people who have way overpaid for these degrees that are really useless. And for someone's, you know, for, for these banks to get to be getting rich off of this government policy is just a redistribution of wealth from taxpayers and from these young people who took loans out to the big banks. I don't, I, I just don't see how conservatives could consider that to be acceptable. It's big government intervening on behalf of business and on behalf of the banks to protect their or give them more. Well, that's the problem. Big government, their hands in way too much. Mm -hmm. I we, think we need a very small federal government, and it, it's yeah. They they they're trying to control everything. But I, but I do think there's something. The, the tides have turned. I do think that freedom, honesty, and integrity. I think that's winning. A lot of these these moral values are probably they're probably viewed as conservative because I don't know if you've ever looked at Jonathan Haidt's moral foundations mm -hmm. research. No, there's six moral foundations. The left has two, care and fairness. So they don't have uh, uh, authority, they don't have loyalty, they don't have purity, and they don't have liberty. Those are the other, I believe those are the other ones I could yeah. be making mistake, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Conservative ha conservatives have all of them, all six, in, in, in fairly equal amounts. My favorite point here is that libertarians have one, just liberty. Liberty. They, like seriously, libertarians, like uh, uh, when they, they, they initially had five moral foundations, then realized something was missing because some, some people had nothing 
And they're like, what is this? And it was like, oh, because they only care about people being allowed to do their own thing and be left alone. And libertarians, you know, they, they, there was a, uh, wh- who was it? Someone got booed for saying that uh, you shouldn't be allowed to sell drugs Austin to kids. Austin Peterson. Right, yeah. that they yes, booed him. Right? That was Austin Peterson. <laughs> like, okay, dude. Like, on, and <laughs> not uh, to be fair, I think they were rejecting his framing, but still a very no, funny moment. No, but Gary moment. Johnson tweeted, like the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire said, like, oh, no, bring I'm back sorry. child labor. Maybe it was Gary Johnson who was booed. I don't, maybe it no, wasn't no, no. Austin Peterson. Uh, I need uh, to double check. The Libertarian Party of New Hampshire said, you know, legalize child labor. Yeah. And Gary Johnson was like, no, no. no. Like, this is not what we need. And, <laughs> and then it's like, people are... are, are well, you see the slippery slope, because now with the you know, trying to teach these kindergartners about transsexuals and sex period. That it's, it's it, it, where, where does it stop? Where what? do you draw the line and go, okay, this is it. No more. Well, that's a whole other conversation, right? Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, the point I'm bringing up with the moral foundations is that a lot of the things that uh, we, we want to be winning are more tip, are typical of conservatives like, uh, like loyalty, uh, um, and purity is another more foundation. Purity meaning like you don't want children being abused or exposed. But this is not a moral foundation that exists among the left for the most part. So it's typically conservative. But my point was, uh, I think these moral foundations are starting to win. And I think it has a lot to do with the internet, with uh, podcasts, the ability of people to, to form communities online. But what needs to happen more of, which is happening, is people standing up, speaking up, and just standing firm and saying, you know, I'm not going to do something that is that is a violation of these foundations. Because I, what I will tell you is, if the moral foundations, the six that are winning, uh, indicate that conservatives tend to be winning, uh, and, and conservative isn't necessarily the right answer because libertarian, post-liberal, right. conservative, but it just means that ideas like loyalty are winning. That's not, with, with that not being on the left, you can understand why they're, why the left is angry about it and why the left would force or convince a conservative or libertarian to abandon a moral foundation for personal gain. So if you're a conservative and you have all of the moral foundations and loyalty is something that's important to you, and then you see something that is an egregious violation of, say, uh, loyalty to the country, um, that doesn't mean blind loyalty. It means like we're going to stand by and support you know, our, our troops. We're going to stand by and support our law enforcement who are genuinely trying. Again, not blindly, right. legitimately, the left would say, no, don't do that. Don't be loyal to your community. When, when, when we say with the boot on your neck, you're not allowed to sell coffee, we want you to abandon your moral foundations and do what we want because we have none. And because of the way they've put the boot down, you've got cops who are like, yes, sir, whatever you say. And that's horrifying. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the Timcast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.